Facebook event notifications. Fucking Facebook event notifications. We love the warm feeling inside when we get them, but hate the pressure of having to respond. It's a minefield. Can't go is way too abrasive. Maybe means I'd so love to come, but I'm not. And even going is, she, I don't know, maybe at the last minute I'll have a very important prostate examination. Now I haven't been outside my room for more than five months now, so I don't get invited to too much stuff anymore. But over and over again, I got invites for seemingly the same event. Something about an elephant developing. At first I just thought it was a funny name. Then I grabbed my pink notebook, my Michael Moore hat, and began to investigate. The Elephant and Castle Shopping Centre had only ever been mentioned to me by them very specific type of rich kids who like to play poor. Got a bacon butty from Greg's and went bowling in the shopping centre. LOL. The shopping centre opened in 1965, built on the site of a bomb damaged estate. For 50 years, it's been filled with local traders and become a home for the Latin American population of London. In 2013, property developer Delancey bought the shopping centre for £80 million with the promise to make Elephant and Castle the new hub of the South. project with an ambition to create. And looking at Delancey's plans, they don't seem too bad. Demolishing an ugly, old shopping centre and replacing it with houses. For people living and working in London who will want to rent properties rather than buy. Great. Everyone needs houses. Teaming up with a cool art university, UAL, to build them a new campus too. Amazing! And it looks so cool and futuristic. Like Blade Runner. What's all the complaining and protesting about? What's the issue these crusty students have? There simply can't be many reasons this is a bad thing. I'm gonna take some real convincing. So let's go this train. They're, yeah. they're they're destroying the shopping centre. Yeah. They're throwing all of the traders that are in there in the moment, which serve a very specific local community. Yeah. They're putting them in a fucking shipping container. For, what, a couple <laughs> of months? Who for, for, and, you know, however many of them, there's, it's undecided how many yeah. are going to go in and where it's all going to be. And they're building flats that no one in the area could afford to buy. And will stay empty for years. She was really convincing. Of the 979 houses that are due to be built, only 35% are described as being affordable. Um, that's not really a benefit, that just over a third will be affordable. Doesn't sound like they're actually for the average Joes. You know. For people living and working in London who will want to rent properties rather than buy. 
the sort of in summary what's sort of happening is uh, UAL and a massive property developer are teaming up in a plan that will see uh, the local community, the local sort of working class, um, largely Latin American, largely BME community, um, turfed out of the area as we're seeing across London and replaced with a new shiny building for the LCC and luxury housing. Okay, I have one thing to show you though. It is going to look like Blade Runner. <laughs> that is really cool, isn't it? That it's going to look like Blade Runner. Yes, there's a desperate need for housing. There's a housing crisis in London. Um, what we definitely don't need more of is like luxury housing that's going to stay um, empty, which is already the case like in lots of the tower blocks that have been built in um, Elephant Castle. What's going to happen to the traders? What we've seen, like basically no budging on is uh, the traders, which currently all they've been offered is temporary, under, for an undisclosed period of time, undisclosed number of traders, relocation in um, the, in uh, basically an expanded like, box park. For years and years, um, the traders in the shopping centre and also around, a lot of them were just like tidy chaos, uh, like stall holders, as well as the community have been like calling on like the lands who own the land um, for you know to fix the shop to fix the the escalators that barely work the toilets have been out of order for ages um, like vast improvements that are needed that have just been completely ignored and sort of turned away when what in the long term the lands have been sort of doing is sort of trying to increase basically the sort of appetite for and demand for change right, and right. it makes it easier then for them to come on and say like this is a mess this is falling apart here's our like shiny uh proposal of how we can change things while like turfing out all of those who currently like you know live and work and lie on it so they so they bought the shopping center let it run to ruin didn't yeah. fix anything so it looked shitter and shitter to the point yeah. where everyone goes oh well maybe we 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 do need this yeah. regeneration and they can sort of misquote People within the shopping centre saying like like nine percent like x percent of people in the shopping centre have called for improvements over the past few years without addressing the fact that like none of these maintenance issues or anything they've like actively yeah. not responded to anything. They of own it. Yeah, yeah. They're the people that should be yeah, yeah. sorting they're it the out. They're the ones not answering any of this, but they're like see everyone everyone right. wants it to change. Yeah. And everyone wants it to change because it hasn't been maintained by Delancey. Yeah. There's often like opposition to um, developments or like regeneration, any of these things that is often posed as like if you're opposed to progress, like you just want things to you know, stay the same, you don't want change, you don't want things to get better, just this sort of like static um, like state. Um, but I think the fundamental question is like yes, change, yes, development, yes, like regeneration, all of these things, but on whose terms and to benefit whom? Improve things that are just not right and not good. What does that mean? Who decides what's not good? You? Have you ever been in the shopping centre? Maybe that's why Delancey registered the site in the British Virgin Islands. Because they've never been and someone just told them it was there. Nothing to do with avoid paying corporation tax. Who will the majority of the houses be affordable for? For the students of UAL? for the local people and traders who have lived in and built the community? Or will they be for the kind of people that Delancey's multi-millionaire owner Jamie Ritblatt hangs out with? His Qatari ruling family business partners? The Conservative MPs he bankrolls? All that money and only Bristol. Or maybe one of UAL's management team could live in one. They earn a lot of money. I tried to get in contact with Delancey to ask them. And to my great surprise, no one from a multinational corporation would speak to a second year fine arts student on camera. So I set my sights on UAL. Fucking goddammit, I have a lisp. They hold the keys to this. Their involvement gives Delancey liberal brownie points to say, hey look, we're the good guys. We're building a university too. With an ambition really to deliver them into ideally a long-term rental tenure, as we are already at the Olympic Park in Stratford, at East Village. Um, yeah, £335 a fucking week for one fucking room. I go to UAL. If they know they aren't doing anything bad, why hadn't I heard about any of this? 
A cutting edge new building. I thought they'd sing it from the rooftops. Surely someone will reply to my email about an interview to explain what they're doing. Why aren't they proud to talk about it? Am I that much of a loser that even teachers won't talk to me? Tell me what happened before this. We made a collective democratic decision that with degree shows, our approach was very much like we wanted to engage with them and intervene in them. We didn't want to disrupt them or shut them down. For, for like about a couple of hours, uh, we sort of leafed to people, had lots of conversations, visitors, students, staff. Um, and then in the final half an hour, so just as the debrief was coming to an end, people had seen work, we'd had lots of conversations, went in, we, um, in sort of like an open area, we read out a written sort of statement on a megaphone, um, basically to sort of just contextualise and explain to people like what we were doing that day, held up a few banners while we read it out. An elephant in Castle, UAL has partnered up with Parks of Order International Galaxy in the development plan to demolish the elephant in Castle shopping centre and replace it with luxury housing and a new building for the LCC turfing of the local working class and VME community. UAL workers, units and unions have all condemned UAL's we got like, you know, obviously some people didn't notice, we got lots of people stopping, listening, um, mm. again, got, gave out more leaflets, got a bunch of like cheers, people being like, oh yeah, good on you. Yeah. Um, and then things just very quickly and like bizarrely escalated. Security were immediately called upon us. They were instructed basically by management to um, you know, get us out of the building. As soon as we were asked to leave, they also started like taking us by our shoulders, uh, pulling us, dragging us, getting us towards the exit um, near immediately. Um, there was also like staff members who joined in who were just like being very aggressive. Um, there was one guy who sort of like grabbed like my arm and then sort of like breast. I was like, take your hands off me, you can't do that. And he was like, well, get out of the building. Because it said, it said to people that this was something that needed to be stopped because security was around, that this is something that was a problem. So, because before that happened, I guess people were walking past, yeah. people were stopping to listen and then carrying on going, people were like um, picking up leaflets and whatever. But at that point, it definitely, it, it sort of, it amplifies the idea that this is something that needs to be taken away. So in a way, by them reacting so drastically and violently, it actually like validates what everyone's saying, what you guys were saying, because it was like, why are, why are they trying to stop them saying this? Really, security should not, are not authorised to touch students. Like, if a university wants to, like, forcibly remove an occupation, a protest, they have to get an injunction, they have to get you know, a long process before, like, the cops can do that. Security mm. are not in a position to do that. This is in direct response to, like, students, um, like, utilising their, their right to protest um, and the right to expose what their university's doing. Yeah. To resist that, we sort of sit down um, and then we sort of stay there for the night in a sort of, like, flash one-day occupation. But you stay there so, for the night? Yeah, in, in sort of response to, basically, like, just the like ridiculous and completely like insane response got from security where like actually no we have we're students here we have a right to protest there was one point that where it was like it was maybe one o'clock or like 2 a.m and people started to fall asleep and uh security just like kept turning the lights on so they kept turning on all the lights like the in the foyer which i found thought was just like a huge waste of electricity yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, everyone did like eventually sleep, so it was just like them trying to be a little bit vindictive. Is this in character for UAL? When um, there was a few years back, uh, a long, like, I can't remember how many weeks it went on for, occupation at CSM against um, the cutting of foundation courses. Mm. Um, eventually, the university took their students to court. 
um, and then like so forcibly evicted them. Various other sort of like attempts to just create a sort of culture of uh, being sort of watched and being questioned if you've been identified as someone who's involved in the campaign. Um, there's just been like lots of stories of like UAL outright taking down students' work when it's been explicitly about the plan or like saying you can't put this in the caption, it's too political, turn it down. Because of what well, you can see what happened at the Stick Show and their claim that there was physical confrontation between students, that staff members were forced to break up, um, they placed a ban on myself and all other identified protesters for the duration of the second degree show. On a human level, can you understand why they reacted in the way of like, oh, this is our big degree show, this is our big thing? Can you understand why they freaked out a little bit? I think in terms of like management, um, like first of all, it's not that night. The, they are responding like this because this is a big, you know, show. It's the, it's the biggest celebration. You have like people in the industry, your friends, family, members of the public. You know, they don't want it to be known that like they are just like enabling gentrification in that area. It's a bad look. You yeah. know, they're supposed to be this arts university that prides itself and like being progressive and like widening participation. Mm -hmm. The only way that I could see that it would piss them off so much is because, is because they're in no position or they don't think that they need to ever be in a position to listen to anyone else's demands. I'm worried about what's going to happen to me for including all this footage. This has snowballed into an issue of freedom of speech on college campuses. Students' right to speak their mind is being restricted. The students punished for it by university executives. So, with that in mind, I look forward to seeing every single one of the usual suspects who preach how freedom of speech in this country is under attack at our next protest, standing with us proudly and proving they actually care about freedom of speech not just wanting to say mean things about people who are different. I won't hold my breath. Night or darkness, Christ or devil. Thank you very much. Clue Nash Jones. With actress and dear friend Lily Lesser, I headed to the shopping centre to find out from the traders themselves what it means to them and how the redevelopment plans would affect their businesses. It's a good way, it's, it's like a good community to put it that way. We're all friends, We're, I work next door, he does his hair to here. I call him my second wife because I've known him more, longer as much as my wife. Right? So it's a good community, we all have, it's like a little village. Yeah, when we first started this business, it was very nice. The small customers, but since they want to demolish it, there's no more business. Everything is a bit quiet. So a lot of shops have moved. So more people are not coming like it was before. I know it needs to be done now because it's very old. The building is very old. But. It's going to be an iconic building that's going to be gone. For, as far as I see, they say resident in there. Which half the community out here can't afford. But that's a sad thing. Because it should be for your local community, because they're the ones who brought this area. They've been in this area all this time. The good thing they do something about it, but the drawback is it's not going to be for the community. For you, the, the plans to demolish are definitely a bad thing. It is. I wasn't very happy about it. Because it's affect my business. It's affect my business, so I'm so worried about it. The business has been over over 30 years. I've been working here for 20 years. The owners have been here over 30 years in this centre. And this centre is only about 52 years old, so if you think about it, half the life in the shops and the shops been here. They want to kick us all, all of us out. They, they say they're going to help all the local traders. They can't find a space for us. When I turn over our size, we said, oh, well, we have got a 3,000 square foot shop in our plans. So what do I do? But I don't want to go all the way to Campbell, Peckham. Nobody knows me there. They know me here. Nobody's 
actually come from the developers to tell us, listen, if we can't find a place for you, there's a certain amount of money and you find your own place. Nobody's ever told us. None of, none of us are alive in the world. I'll have to go find a job. If, if the owner doesn't decide, hey, I can't find a space here, he might just say, all right, I'll pack it in, but we'll have to go find a job. At my age, we're not going to go find a job that I like, and pay the same kind of money, and we'll find that. The company said they're going to offer us a place, but where they're going to offer us, we might not like it. The place might not be a suitable place for business. I can understand if it was a lot of it for social housing, I can understand very well. They keep on saying there's shortages of houses for everybody. So why, did you, why did you build a house that going to cost you half a million pounds? For a, a bed, two bedroom box, basically. That nobody can afford. Well, local people can't afford. Well, as far as I care, basically they can destroy a community. Just because of greed. A lot of the community, they are not happy as well. All the shops. They, they, they move. So all the community here, they find it difficult. They're going a long distance to buy what they need. It's very, very difficult. So, just it. No. A lot of people know about what's going on. Yeah. It's just, it's one of those sort of powers that be thinks that um, a lot of people allow themselves to just um, say that this is what's happening and even though we don't like it, it's like out of our control. Right. So we're not even gonna try it. One of the most important things is not the idea that we didn't want UAL to, to, um, to keep developing, it was the fact that we wanted a, we wanted a situation where the people that were being outed of their spaces had somewhere to go back mm -hmm. at, uh, at a discounted rate, so they were able to afford it still. I still like, stand behind the idea that um, that while while the city continues to develop, it's not like it shouldn't be in your best interest to just to ditch the little guy. Maybe it needs a lick of paint, and maybe it's not for you. But the Elephant and Castle shopping centre is essential for a community in London. Why should you care though? What's in it for you? The answer is nothing. You won't gain anything. But there's nothing else in life but kindness. And what UAL and Delancey are doing is not kind. That's enough reason to care. At the end of the last, Sahir announced the date for the next protest. Everyone was fired up and excited. Well, almost everyone. Double, we have four white